Gravel and fast are just two words that don't go together. I mean, gravel riding is about going slowly on slow bikes for a really long time and probably carrying masses of luggage filled with God only knows what. Some hot chocolate, a packet of custard creams, a scarf, because you never know, and also some casual shades for trying to look cash. Except that's not actually true, is it? For many of us, gravel riding is at its best when it's as fast as possible. Fast is fun, and fun is also fast. Plus, with the increasing number of gravel races out there at the minute, fast can also just mean doing your best. And yes, gravel racers still try to look like they're not taking things too seriously, but let's face it, they probably all actually use their post-race beers to water the flowers. <laughs> yeah. Now, Personally, I like to drink my post-race beer, but if someone were to dangle a carrot of free speed in front of my nose, I would definitely try to grab it. Which is why, when Ridley said we've got a new aero gravel bike, do you want to make a video about it? I said, yes, please. And then when they said, oh, by the way, it's also got the new classified rear hub on there, well, I very nearly drove to Belgium myself to go pick it up. The cycling world is a richer place for the list of things that Belgians have either perfected or created, like beer and the classics, Friet, Sven Nace, Philippe Gilbert, and fast bikes, which is Ridley all over. They built the bike for the current world hour record holder, Victor Campenaerts, and they also have in the Noah Fast an aero bike that's been given several best aero bike accolades in bike tests from around the world, which is what makes this one, the Canzo Fast, quite so interesting. It's basically the love child of a Ridley Noah Fast and their gravel bike, the Canzo. So it's got all the aeroness of the Noah Fast mated to the geometry of the Canzo. Now Ridley reckon that this is the fastest gravel bike in the world. And we've got no way of verifying those claims, of course, but I've certainly never seen a gravel bike before that's quite so clearly tailored for aerodynamics. Apparently, it's up to 17 watts faster than an ordinary gravel bike. At what speed, I'm not entirely sure, but that does sound like a significant amount. More interesting still, though, is the fact that when you compare it to Ridley's Noah fast road bike, it gives away just four watts, which then begs the question about whether this is an aero gravel bike or actually, an aero do-it-all bike. Anyway, let's not get ahead of ourselves. Firstly, let's see how they've done it. Let's start with the front end, where rightly so, there's been a whole load of attention paid to areas that we take for granted, for example, like the transition from fork to frame, or indeed these little flicks at the bottom of the fork legs here that Ridley call F-wings. Then you'll notice there's a complete absence of cables here. They're all fully integrated, super clean, and also super aero. They're even integrated into this one-piece aero bar and stem, which hasn't just been lifted from the road bikes. This is completely designed for gravel, so you've got a shorter reach and also shallower drop on there, which is also flared as well by about 16 degrees. So you could have narrow brake hoods to be super aero, but then also a wider stance when you're on the drops for riding technical terrain. The tube shapes, all taken again from the Noah Fast, so you've got those really clear truncated knacker profiles to decrease drag at higher your angles. Now, whilst many brands will develop their aero products in CFD analysis, Ridley have access to basically their own wind tunnel. So the Flanders Bike Valley Tunnel is a facility that's shared between three brands of which Ridley is one. So they get, they get quite a competitive advantage from that, you probably think. Now, going back to the similarities with the Noah Fast, the seat stays, as you can tell, are also dropped, perhaps more pronounced here, and really say that it's actually to improve comfort, which is good, because comfort and damping also contribute to going fast as well. And speaking of which, the tyre width on here, you can fit 42s, apparently, with room to spare, so not quite as voluminous as some gravel bikes, but then this is, of course, all about going fast. How fast exactly? 
unlike Ridley, we don't have our own wind tunnel. However, I do have a Wahoo, and so I'm gonna try and get a KOM on this bike. That should give us a bit of an indication of how capable it is. The KOM I've got in mind is one actually I've already got, but I've got it on a road bike, okay? So it's kind of mellow gravel, but I came through here on a road ride, full gas. And so let's see if an aero gravel bike will can have the edge. My word. I'm sure the aerodynamics helped, but so did the massive tailwind. Okay, are you ready? Oh, exactly the same time! I had to slow down for a dog. I killed it. Well, I feel like it's a moral victory, given that obviously I didn't want to run over a, a small dog, but um, if you need proof, it's on here. On, yeah, see, there you go, slowed down. Okay, okay, so it's fast and it's aero, we get that. What else can I tell you though? Well, the frame weighs 1,190 grams and the riding position of it is a little bit shorter and a little bit taller than what you'd normally find on a road bike as befitting of a gravel bike, giving you a bit of extra control on the rough stuff. However, it's also worth noting though, that if this is almost as aero as a NOAA Fast, if you fancy an aero road bike, but you can't literally stretch to the position that you get on one, then you could consider something like this and just fit narrower tires on there. But you then get the added versatility of being able to fit wider tires, and also I noticed being able to fit mud guards on there as well. The frame is one by specific, but as I mentioned at the beginning of the video, this one here is fitted with a classified rear hub. So Ridley are working hand in hand with them, and I believe that this bike is one of the only ways you can actually get hold of the hub at the moment. So we will have a full video coming up on the channel soon, but in a nutshell, Basically, this rear hub does the job of a front derailleur and two chain rings up front, because inside there is a little planetary gear system that swaps between two gear ratios, one to one, which is obviously normal, and then one to 0.7. Now that is a difference that's probably equivalent to or larger than most double chain ring setups. This one has a 48 tooth front ring, but when you swap it to the smaller gear ratio, that's equivalent of about 33 or 34. I believe, that's my maths, so maybe don't quote me on there. Now then, it swaps between the gears wirelessly, so it's fitted to the DI2 here, um, and then this is your wireless transmitter. And it differs from a front derailleur because it is almost instantaneous, the way you shift, and you can also shift under load as well. You notice if you look closely that that rear cassette is not a standard rear cassette, and that's because the free hub body is a lot wider in order to fit all of the gear internals inside. So classified are making their own cassettes. This one on here is an 11 to 34. Now it adds a little bit of weight to the bike compared to a one by setup. It's about 200 grams apparently. So that's a little bit less than or equivalent to a standard two by setup. I confess, all I've noticed is this kind of gentle sort of ticking noise that you get as you're riding along in that lower ratio. The rest of this particular build is Shimano's GRX DI2 version. Wheels are from Forza, which is Ridley's own brand, as are bar and stem. We've got Seller Italia seat post on there, WTB tires, and Rotor's super light crank set. All in, the bike weighs 8.55 kilos, apparently. And the last point to note is that Ridley have their kind of in-house online customizer. So if you don't like the look of this stock paint job, or indeed some of the others, then you can actually choose your own unique paint scheme on there, which is, which is always a cool option to have. Now, one final point. Just how fast do you need to go in order to get the benefit of aerodynamics? Well, the answer is actually aerodynamics has a benefit at any speed. Personally, I find that you can feel the difference. It's actually tangible at around 20 to 25 k's an hour. And when I look back at my own gravel rides, that is pretty much my average speed generally when I go out. And actually, I went back and looked at the only 
proper gravel race that I've ever done, Steamboat last year, and I averaged 30.1 Ks an hour there. So they are pretty brisk and therefore aerodynamics will definitely make a difference. I suspect that some of you will still be railing against this and I kind of don't blame you. There's still quite a lot of naivety about aerodynamics on road bikes. So when you take it off road, I can imagine it's gonna be even worse. But like it or not, aerodynamics is actually a thing. Now, whether or not it matters to you, well, that is another point entirely. But remember though, fast bikes can still go slowly. They just go a little bit less slowly than slow bikes. Anyway, I'd be super interested to hear your thoughts on it. Remember as well that there will be a first look coming of that classified rear hub. So stay tuned to the channel for that. All that's left though is for you to give this video a big thumbs up if you've enjoyed it.